The last pattern we are going to look into is iterator pattern. The last pattern in a behavioral pattern. So what is iterator pattern? It provides a way to access the elements of aggregate object sequentially without exposing its underlying representation. So if you happen to have a case where you have uh, the, uh, the, uh, some internal aggregate of some object and uh, you do want to hide that internal aggregate structure, uh, instead you want the client to be able to use, uh, to, to access the object in sequential order, that's when you want to use iterator pattern. And Java already provides iterator, right? So we're going to just simulate it. So Java iterator is in fact using uh, the iterator pattern. So we have iterator interface. It represents uh, abstract, ident uh, abstract uh, abstraction defining iterator. I should actually rewrite this statement. Then we have a concrete iterator which basically implement the iterator, uh, basically, you know, uh, is next, get next, and things like that. And the container interface, it represents aggregation, and then concrete container, this is the one that actually provides internal aggregation. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, iterator example. So we have two containers. So one is animal container, and uh, this one is actually maintaining animals in a form of uh, array. So this is internal rep aggregate representation. It's using array. And then we have a flower container. Uh, flower container is using list of string as internal representation. Now what you want to do is we want to provide, you want to hide this internal representation from the user. So user will just use iterator interface. So iterator interface is basically uh, has next method and the next method. Okay. And uh, then we have uh, actual uh, the, uh, the uh, um, uh, 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 i container. Uh, the oh, i container will actually create uh, the actual i iterator object, and then we have uh, the uh, animal container contains this. You know, in this case, we actually have uh, the inner class called the animal iterator, which implements this iterator. And basically, this animal iterator will provide implementation of has next and next. Okay. Uh, you know, we actually make this one as the internal class because this is used only in the context of this internal representation. Okay, I mean you can certainly take this out if you want to, but uh, uh, because uh, the uh, it access, uh, yeah. In fact, you know what? This is actually internal class because it has to access the private uh, the uh, attribute of the apparent class. Okay, so in this case, it has to be internal class. Uh, the inline class like this. And uh, the, the flower container uh, again provides the uh, flower iterator object, uh, the class uh, implementing iterator. And basically, you know, it does implement has next and next uh, the method implementation. Okay, so as far as the uh, client is concerned, the client is concerned, it, you know, this good part. Client does not need to know, I should say, need to know client uh, does not need to know the internal data structure of the containers. It doesn't know how uh, animals are in fact represented inside the animal container. It doesn't have to know how flower is actually represented internally, right? It just used the iterator, okay? So, you know, basically if I run this code, Okay, so it's just accessing animals and uh, flowers. So this code does not need to be changed regardless of the internal ag aggregate representation of animal container and uh, flower container. Okay, so uh, the, uh, it actually provides some kind of abstract 
way of accessing elements in that aggregate. Again, you know, the, uh, that the JDK has iterator interface, right? So you're basically simulating that with the I iterator in our example. Okay. All right. So let's see whether we have a homework for that. Yeah, I'm not sure we have homework for that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, this is pretty straight. 